there is a really cool feature on Samsung phones that allows you to switch an app from full screen to the pop-up view just by swiping in from the top edge of the screen, just like that. But unfortunately, it's not exactly easy to do this as you can see, well that is unless you make one important crucial change to the settings. Let me actually show you. Oh, and by the way, for this, you're going to need the GoodLock app, which I think many of you guys already have this. But if you don't, go ahead and download this from the Galaxy Store. Once you have this on your phone, open it and inside, you want to download the multi-star module. Then open and enable it. Swipe down and tap on set pop-up gesture size. Switch it on and slide this to large and that's it. So now you should be able to easily switch to the pop-up view by swiping your finger from the top edge of the screen, which makes multitasking super easy. Now, speaking of multitasking, there's a hidden feature in the gallery which allows you to open two instances of the gallery at once, which is kind of useful if you want to compare two photos side by side. But this is actually disabled by default. So to enable this, head on into the settings of your gallery then scroll down and tap on about gallery. Now here you want to repeatedly tap on version until you see a message gallery labs is enabled. And once you see this, go back, scroll down and you'll see a secret menu called gallery labs. Now inside, scroll down and under one UI 6.x, switch on open in other window. And that's it. Now when you restart the gallery and open a photo or a video, Tap on these three dots and select open in other window to open two instances of the gallery in the split view mode. Very useful if you want to compare two photos or even edit photos and look at them side by side. Alright, so let's go back into the gallery labs because there is one more feature that you should absolutely enable. And that is the private album under one UI 7.x. So this unlocks a privacy feature which you can find by tapping on the menu button and here you're gonna see something called private album. This is like a private space for your photos and videos which you can only access through your fingerprint. So just like that. Now moving photos and videos to the private album is very easy. So just select whatever you want to move. Then tap on these three dots and then select move to private album. And that's it. The selected photos and videos will be gone from the main gallery and now if you want to view them you will need to select private album from over here and then use your fingerprint. So that is awesome. This is going to give you an extra layer of privacy to hide all of those naughty photos and videos. Samsung phones do a really annoying thing and that is they automatically turn up the brightness whenever you open a photo that has been taken with the camera. This increase in brightness is so dramatic that it hurts the eyes especially if you're using the phone at night at low brightness. Fortunately, this is something that we can switch off by going into the settings, then scrolling down to advanced features and inside you want to switch off super HDR. And now the phone is going to keep the brightness at the level that you have set whenever you open a photo that has been taken with the camera. And also on newer phones like the Fold 7, disabling Super HDR is also going to prevent the phone from cranking up the brightness whenever you play an HDR video. Trust me guys, keep this feature off and your eyes are going to say thank you. Now, one situation where you want the screen to be nice and bright is while taking photos because there is nothing worse than a dim screen while you are composing your photo. Now, obviously, you can turn up the brightness manually by yourself, but why not automate this and have the phone turn the brightness up automatically whenever you launch the camera? Just like that. So, what you want to do is head on into the settings of your phone and then tap on modes and routines and make sure that you're in the routines tab. Then hit the plus button and under if, you want to add the item that will trigger the increase in brightness. So here we want to add the camera app, it's going to be under apps opened and here it is. Next, you want to add the action that happens when the camera app is opened. So from here, we are going to go into display then brightness and finally set this to whatever you feel comfortable. And lastly, don't forget to give the routine a name so that you know what it's for. And that's it. 
After saving this routine, the brightness is going to go up whenever you launch the camera, which is very useful. And it's going to go back to normal when you quit the camera. At the start of the video, you might have noticed this super cool wallpaper effect. And also notice these super cool icon design which looks appropriate for the fold because of their boxy design. Now if you want to set these up on your phone, then once again you want to head on into the Good Lock app. And this is something that I highly recommend every Samsung Galaxy owner to download because Good Lock unlocks a ton of additional features. Now first I'm going to show you how to set up the wallpaper effect. So we are going to head on into the Wonderland module. Now inside you want to select the lock screen effect option and here you want to tap on new. Next tap on the image settings and you'll get an option to set this up for both lock screen and the always on display. You want to tap on the gallery icon in the lock screen and then pick a lock screen wallpaper from your gallery. Once you do, make any adjustments that you like and then tap on the effect type and choose the type of effect you want to see when you wake the phone up. My personal favorite is the CRT effect because this is what we used to have on old Sony Ericsson phones back in the day. Anyways, don't forget to save your effect and give it a name and finally set it as your wallpaper. And you are gonna see the effect the next time you wake your phone up. And that looks absolutely phenomenal. Next, if you want to customize the way the icons look, then you want to head on into the theme park module in Good Lock. Once you're inside, tap on icon and then create new. And from here, you'll be able to choose the shape of the icons. So just pick whichever one suits your personality. And the best part is that you can customize these even further and change how they look. That is awesome. And once you are done, don't forget to save and give it a name. And finally, apply them. And you're gonna see that this changes the way the icons look. That is nice, I like this. All right, so since we are already in the Good Lock app, I want you to download the Sound Assistant module because there's a super useful setting called Media Manner Mode, which you should absolutely enable. This automatically mutes all of the media sounds whenever you put your phone on vibrate or put the phone on do not disturb. You know what, let me quickly demonstrate. So right now this feature is off and what I'm gonna do is put the phone on do not disturb. Now assuming you are in an important meeting and you accidentally played something on your phone. And as you can hear, the media volume is still not off. And this can be a problem if you're in an important meeting. However, if you switch on media manner mode, the phone is also gonna automatically mute the media volume whenever you switch the ringtone off. So now if you play something accidentally, you'll notice that the media volume is off and you'll have to manually bring the volume up. Super useful feature, right? One more thing that you will find super useful is having the full date in the status bar. You can set this up through the quick star module in good lock, then tap on clock settings and here enable show date. And as you can see, this adds full date to the status bar. And trust me, this is more useful than you think it is. And if you think that this is eating up too much space, well, then you can tap here and choose a format that uses less space. So yeah, tons of customization available. All right, so next you want to open the phone dialer and then tap on these three dots and head on into the call settings. Inside, you want to scroll down to call display while using apps. Now inside, the first thing you want to do is change this from full screen to small pop-up. This allows incoming calls to appear in a pop-up rather than taking over the entire screen when you're using apps on your phone. Now the problem is whenever you answer the call, it still goes full screen minimizing whatever app you were using. Annoying, right? So if you want the call to stay in a pop-up even after answering them, you want to switch on keep calls in a pop-up. So this is going to keep the call in a pop-up even after you answer them and you'll still be able to use the app that you were using before. And you can still go full screen by tapping on the call pop-up. So you kind of get best of both worlds. In my previous video, a lot of you guys asked me about which keyboard I use on my phone. Well, this is Swift Key by Microsoft and this actually came pre-installed on the phone. All you need to do is enable it from the settings. Let me quickly walk you through. 
Okay, so once you are in the settings, you want to search for keyboard and there it is. So tap on the keyboard and from here enable Microsoft Swift Key. If your phone does not have Swift Key pre-installed, go ahead and grab it from the Play Store. So once you enable this, change the default keyboard to Swift Key. Now tap here and the first thing we're gonna do is tap on emoji and then enable emoji prediction. Next, head on into layout and keys and enable long press symbols which will add the option to insert symbols when you long press a key very useful and lastly you can also pick a theme if you like there are many to choose from the one that i use is called carbon dark yellow and it looks absolutely awesome and lastly while you're in the keyboard settings you want to switch off keyboard button on navigation bar and show button to hide keyboard switching these two settings off is gonna make the keyboard fit at the bottom of the screen just like this which makes the keyboard look really awesome while using the navigation gestures. And in my opinion, this is superior to the Samsung keyboard because it offers more flexibility and customizability. Now, one super annoying thing that I've noticed is that the screen keeps coming on whenever I've got the phone in my hand. It's super annoying because I don't even have my finger on the power button and it kinda happens frequently. But thankfully, this is something that we can easily fix by switching off two settings. So head on into the settings and then scroll down to advanced features. Inside advanced features, tap on motion and gestures. And inside, switch off double tap to turn on screen and lift to wake. And that is it. Now the phone is not gonna wake up by itself whenever you've got it in your hands or in the pocket of your pants. Very useful, right? All right, so next, you wanna head on into the settings then scroll down to accessibility, inside tap on advanced settings and then time to take action. And here you want to change this to 10 seconds. This is going to do two things. It will make the edge lighting last a bit longer. And secondly, it's going to make the things like the notifications stay on the screen for a bit longer, which can be very useful when you want to type in OTP codes that are delivered through text messages. Again, this is a personal choice. I do prefer keeping it on 10 seconds because I'm kind of slow. A lot of people don't know about this, but you can actually match the colors of the theme of your phone with that of your wallpaper. And it's actually very easy to do. Just pinch in on the home screen and head on into wallpaper and style. Now here, tap on color palette and switch it on. Now what this feature does is that it picks out the colors from your wallpaper and uses them as the theme of the phone. So look at the preview and pick the color palette that you like. Once you're done, you'll notice that the theme of the phone now matches the colors that are in the wallpaper, which makes the phone look super nice. Alright guys, so we're gonna end the video here. If you've enjoyed, make sure to hit the like button, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. This is Tech Guy Charlie, signing off.